Join us as we discuss the Banner Saga, the next episode of Time Hop Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Time Hop Podcast. I'm your host, David Lozada. I'm joined with Lindsay Schubert. Hello. There she is. In case you don't know, the Time Hop Podcast is a podcast that plays games of the past to let you know if they're worth playing today. Today's episode is all about the Banner Saga, originally originally released on January 14th, 2014 exclusively on PC and mobile, I think, at least on mobile. But before we get into that, Lindsay, how has your week been? Um, so, let me see, for the past week I've been really lazy just with everything. Um, it's I've cold. really just been, oh yeah, it's been cold. <laughs> cold even in That's... Florida. Yes, it is cold down here. It's been in the 40s 50s i don't think it's ever been in the 30s this week but um yeah that was a primary reason of me pretty much just being lazy and only watching tv and playing video games (laughs) that's all right you gotta relax every now and then you know what i mean like you can't always be doing work you gotta take time for yourself and Watch some some good shows, some good movies, you know. Yeah, I mean, I feel bad, but I, you, you're right. <laughs> yeah, we're all human. We gotta relax. We gotta take time for ourselves. It's, it's natural. Uh, as for me, my week has been busy. I've been working a lot. Uh, you know, just writing a lot. Uh, you can catch all my articles on King Gamer and Game Revolution. You know, just the usual. Uh, writing about lots of different stuff, anime too, so check out my work if you can. Alright, so let's jump straight into the topic of the show. Today's topic is all about the Banner Saga, as I mentioned before, originally released for PC on January 14th, 2014. In case you don't know, the Banner Saga was developed by Stoic Studio, Uh, and it's all about, it's kind of based in North mythology, and it tells a story about the player's caravan, caravan, um, kind of like Oregon Trail, uh, at least half of it, and uh, human beings uh, are kind of accompanied by this uh, Minotaur-esque race called the Varls, V-A-R-L-S, uh, as they have to defeat this uh, previously extinct species called the Dredge. Uh, and the Dredge just want to wipe out everyone and anything in the world aside from, you know, uh, themselves. Uh, there are three games in the trilogy. And they span, uh, I think the last one released last year. Um, they span multiple console generations. They can all be played on uh, PC. And uh, I think you can all play them. You can play them all on Switch too, actually, now. Um the Stoic Studio itself was made up of three Bioware designers, um, and the game was funded on Kickstarter. It's a very brutal Western RPG. I will touch upon the gameplay later, but first let's talk about the presentation, because I think that's one of the most striking aspects of the Banner Saga. Lindsay, what did you think of the game's presentation? So I like the graphics, the animation, the artwork. It's pretty unique, and I think it is a staple of the banner saga so i also didn't know about the banner saga until the most recent one was released and you know there was the key for it um up on king gamer so i had no idea (laughs) what this was Mm. um yeah it definitely has its its audience like there's it's definitely like Mm -hmm. a very niche kind of group of people that that demand this sort of thing but i'm sorry i cut you off what were you saying 
Uh, sorry, I was gonna also add that it kind of also looks like, not that this is a bad thing, but it kind of looks like it was um, done in like MS Paint. Um, <laughs> it's very intricate though, the artwork. Uh, I know what you mean, like it's very simplistic, but it's also very yeah. intricate at the same time. Um, yeah, in the sense that like colors are like primary colors are used a lot here. Um, to kind of draw your attention, especially, you know, when you're in the caravan, you're doing the Oregon Trail type of um, aspect of the game where you have to kind of manage uh, your inventory, you have to manage, you know, your actions and whether or not you're going to take on more people in your caravan or whatever. Um, that part of the game is very image driven. I feel like uh, there are some moments that are particularly ugly, like during cuts, uh, not cutscenes, but dialogue sections the the characters are kind of static and they don't move a lot yeah. like like their 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 clothes move in the wind but like they don't move their mouths like they don't it's it's very kind of off-putting but mm -hmm. um it's, it's 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 very off-putting because when you jump into the gameplay and we'll get to the gameplay next uh they they're very animated like these these character models are very animated uh what did you think when when uh, when the game transitioned to gameplay, did you find that too? Did you find that there was it was like a really big disparity? Yeah, I would have to agree with that. I mean, it, for me, it's not so. Um, it's not so. It doesn't stand out as much to me. Like I see, it doesn't bother me as much. But you know, I I do notice it and. Um, I can understand why it could be a problem for some people. Yeah, I mean, I don't. I wouldn't say it's a problem. I just say it is noticeable. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't think it's it's something that you know detracts from the game at all. If anything, I think it adds to it because it adds some kind of um, I don't know liveliness to the game. But I don't think it's. I, I think that that sh that aspect of it sh could have been somehow transitioned into the dialogue choices until the actual. You know narrative component of the game because it, it's just very jarring um but i suppose if you're used to playing jrpgs and you know very traditional rpgs you're kind of used to that you're you're, you're kind of you know that that stuff is that type of stuff isn't as noticeable to you um yeah. you know and, and that's not really a big knock on the game because the art style of this game is phenomenal like the north the norse um not north uh the north mythology <laughs> the way that they kind of incorporate it and I really like how they, you know, the the Minotaur race, the the Varls, um, they they're they're like humans. They just have kind of horns on their heads. And that's it. Like they're they're just big humans with horns on their heads, and it's kind of cool. You know, um, it, it it it's very grounded. It's very like it's not too fantastical. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel like a lot of RPGs get too fantastical and they kind of lose players that way, but. For me, it, it, it it's appropriately grounded because the gameplay too is very uh, stark and and you know not very fun, not very um, I don't know I don't know how to explain it. What did you think of the art style? Was that art style as impressive to you? Because uh, I would say that certain parts of the art style or are a lot more impressive than other parts. Like I said, like it, it's very intricate in the fact that like, um, you know, there are uh, details, I guess you don't exactly expect to see. Um, oh, yeah. But the, the landscapes and, um, you know, looking at the mountains, mm -hmm. the trees, everything that's in the background, it's pretty vast and I I like how it all looks. Yeah, that's a good point. I think the you know, the developers Stoic Studio, like they, they make that very like apparent because the caravan is so far away, right? When you're doing like the, when you're not in the actual um in the nitty gritty of the battle battle system, like you're kind of it's kind of like this, um this this very long shot and your your caravan is just moving along this you know this narrow path and you could see 
all like the, the mountains in the background. You could see a little bit of vegetation in the foreground. It's very much about the environment. And I, I, that's mm -hmm. the, the, it's almost like the environment's a character itself, you know. Um, yeah. And like the more you know, calm um, the moments of where it's more a little more passive. It, you can kind of tell when it is when that when that's the case because um, there's not as much you know like the 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 environment is more cheery it's much more hopeful it's much more green and full of life but on the opposite end when you know the narrative becomes more stark and becomes much more depressive there's snow it's you know it, it's not very um i don't know how to explain it like it, it's just very it, it feels cold and you don't want to be there so um yeah i feel like it does a good job in kind of portraying and the portraying the mood and, and carrying it throughout the experience. Um, so mm -hmm. moving into the gameplay, what did you think of the game? Because Banner Saga's gameplay, I personally don't think it's fun. But what did you think of it? Um, so I I do like turn based RPGs. I have plenty of friends who don't like the turn based the uh, um uh. <laughs> with the board going on similar to Fire Emblem or Final Fantasy Tactics. I have plenty of friends who don't like that. So I I, I get the view against it, but I I do like how the gameplay is. Um, right. It's not as large of a board uh, in comparison to games like uh, well, I, I think it's about the same as Final Fantasy Tactics, but Fire Emblem is way larger <laughs> in mm -hmm. its uh, boards. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, I mean, I, I'd say something like... Um, I think it's a it's a fair comparison to, 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 like, maybe Disgaea. Yeah, like Final Fantasy Tactics, too, in the sense, like, War of the Lions. Um, uh, and I say War of the Lions because it's a, it's a little more of a mature story there. And I don't have a problem with the, with the with the fundamentals of the gameplay at all. It's just that the gameplay is really kind of brutal. You know, it it really just pulls no punches in the sense that, you know, even when you're up against weak enemies, each each faction has its own set of turns. You know, like the game almost sets out from the from the outset to to deal as much damage onto. The, onto your party as possible because it gives the enemy so many chances so many openings to do that um it, it really like it wants you to die kind of um mm -hmm. because it's a game of it, it, it's and i forgive me listeners for for using this comparison because i know everyone is sick of it but it, it it is kind of like a dark souls-esque type of experience because you have to learn from the experience and then die and then continue forward um and the thing about it is that when you die, it's not like a game over and you have to restart. When you die, you lose your party members. They're dead permanently. And then you just have to, you just have to continue somehow from there. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's not not all yeah. party members. Not all party members. Like, the, the major party members, no. They just kind of respond. They, you know, they come back with full health, you know, later on. But, like, some of the minor ones, they're dead permanently. And you just kind of have to deal with it. Um, you know, it, it, that's, that's a very, I don't know, it, it's a, it's a game of permanency and it's scary, you know, it, I, personally, I don't find fun in that because it's like, it's not like a game then, it, it's more like of a strategy simulator where it's, it's kind of like every one of your choices matters and people love that, people love that, that experience, you know, people love like immersing themselves in these very, you know, um, hard, not hard, not necessarily hard but challenging experiences and uh personally that's not for me but if that's up your alley then the banner slug is for you definitely uh did you come across any of those experiences when you when you were playing or watching the banner saga um since you say that like i i do notice with other uh turn-based rvgs with the map type layout, uh, they do have that level of difficulty. And um, many people don't realize how many truly hard games 
there are out there like in comparison to you know dark souls um mm-hmm. you no know, right. people i guess they're they don't have the exposure to game like banner saga that is just as hard as dark souls um and you also mentioned the loss of party members i think that there's also a lot of party members in the fire emblem franchise oh yeah, yeah, yeah um yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Um, additionally, <laughs> I mean, since it like merges the two play styles together, you also, of course, lose party members in, uh, um, whatchamacallit, the Oregon Trail mm-hmm. games. That's right. mm-hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I, I mean, it's, it's kind of like a fundamental of the, the genre almost like the tactic genre and you know that that's fine that's a fine mechanic but i'm the game itself is already very punishing onto your caravan you know like like everything you do like even like when you think that you do actions that are beneficial to your party it winds up bringing them down like for instance you bring like there are some starving people that you find on the side of the road and you know maybe they join your caravan maybe you give them food and guess what? If you give them food, one of your party members dies because they, they die of starvation, you know? So you're not really being a good pe- person at the end of the day. You know, it's like these really tough moral choices that you have to take, that you have to constantly perform in the game. And then when you go, when you switch into the gameplay, it's not much easier, you know? Like, it, it's mm-hmm. a different type of challenge for sure. It's a much more, you know, technical challenge, but like, it's still very stark. It's still like something that constantly beats you down. And like it's not fun, you know that that's that's not fun to me. Like that's just kind of like depressing, and I don't really want that in a video game. <laughs> I have too much of that in real life. <laughs> I work a nine to five job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like like I I just I don't know. Again, the gameplay is really what puts me off from it. Uh, but but people may disagree. That's fine. You know, uh, different different talks for different folks. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I completely get your view. Because mm-hmm. the reason why, of course, games with this difficulty uh, succeed, why, like, for example, my my favorite hobby is popular speedrunning is because, you know, at the end of the day, you, you are the one who accomplished that large feat. Mm-hmm. And you could go, like, brag about it or whatever you want to do like um it, it's a bragging right to beat this game it seems like uh yeah i mean i could see that like i, I can see how people are like yeah I, you know I, I i you know i i kind of i i focused myself and i and i really like narrowed myself in and i really got myself through the band so i can see that as an as a accomplishment sure um but you know, for me, I'd rather not even do it in the first place. That that's all. <laughs> uh, I'd rather not put myself through it. Uh, so speaking of experiences, what about the sound design uh, and moods? What about the sound design? How how does that kind of affect everything? What do you think, or how did you feel about it? I don't have too much to say on that at the moment. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I haven't experienced too much of the sound design myself. But... Yeah, I mean, from what I've experienced about the sound design, it's kind of like, again, it kind of, it all goes back to the mood of the game. <laughs> like, the very mm-hmm. cold, depressing, uh, stark mood of the game, you know? Like, uh, when, when I know particularly in the gameplay, when enemies are hit, and uh, when your party members especially are hit, like, it's very visceral, it's very ris- visceral. I can see that word visceral and um it 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 hurts you know like like the the characters they sound like they're in real big pain you know and it's you feel bad Mm -hmm. it it, there's very like the minimal is very the quiet the music is very quiet it's not very like it's a very calm you know not like an orchestral score or anything so like these these sound effects like that the that your party members do when when they're inflicted with some kind of damage they're you know you could hear them right away 
and it, I don't know. It, it's just, again, it, it all nails that earlier point that I made. Like, this game is not fun, and <laughs> the sound design makes it even more kind of, ugh. Um, in terms of the, you know, like, the opening score and, and you know, the music of the game, I think that that's a little more, um, what should I say, welcoming. Uh, it's, it's again, Nordic in a way, and it, it, I feel like it incorporates some of the uh, instruments that they use in, in that, in that uh, culture. So it, it properly kind of conveys the sense that this is a, a game that's based on North mythology and et cetera, et cetera. And it's kind of like in this, in this world. Uh, so it does properly put you in in the world. It, it does properly immerse you. Uh, again, mm -hmm. you know, I, it's just, it makes me sad, though. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so moving on to Lasting Appeal, do you think that it's worth playing? Uh, I think it's pretty apparent, you know, listeners, I think it's pretty apparent what I feel about it. But what do you think about it, Lindsay? I think it's worth playing it, especially your view on it. I think that it's going to have to appeal to certain people. <laughs> <laughs> um, even initially, before diving into learning more about the game, mm -hmm. I wasn't li interested in playing it. I mean, I own the game. And I believe that you said that you own the game I do because own the of game. like the, the the free free deals that we were given from whatever. So um, yeah. like I might have played it at some point, but I wasn't as driven to as I am now after seeing it um, in action. Uh, I think it's worth it because um, you get to. Because of what seems like an extreme difficulty compared to other turn-based strategies, I, I may be wrong. It may be like the same level or even easier, but uh, this seems like it is on a more difficult playing field than the games I mentioned before, like Fire Emblem and Final Fantasy Tactics. It seems like it's a notch above those. So it would be like, um, it would sort of be, like I said, a feat um, yeah. beating this game. And if you're really into like, turn based strategies too, like it's like two things. If you're into turn based strategies and if you love beating difficult games, um, I would definitely say that this is a game for that person. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, I'd go the extra. I, I'd, I'd add a little one other thing to that is that if you like something that you know isn't cheery, that isn't you know typical. I don't know. Uh, you know, the hero saves the day type of story. Then this is something that's in your wheelhouse. Like it's something that's definitely different. I could definitely say that um, it's something that's not your typical, you know, the hero saves everything uh, type of type of trilogy. Um, it's not something that, you know, everyone wins at the end of the day. It's something that a lot of people, you know, it, it's very real, uh, very real in that sense that it's like people die, you know, and, and people are lost and there are major sacrifices that you have to do in order to achieve a goal and that if that's something that you want to experience if that's something that that doesn't put you away by all means the banner saga is for you for me personally not something for me not something that i would go out of my way to play or something that i would play on my free time i'd rather just watch the news because at least <laughs> at least i'd be you know a, a little more a little bit more knowledgeable about the real world um and Still, still as depressed, but a little more more knowledgeable of the real world, I guess. And um, yeah, I mean, it, 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 I, again, it, I, I, that's not the reason why I play video games. I, you know, I, I play video games for experiences, just as anyone else. But um, I don't play video games just so I could, you know, be sad or depressed. I, I play them so I could 
you know, have fun and not take myself out of the moment and, yeah. uh, I don't know, make myself happy for a little bit of time. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So that about wraps it up. Our impressions of the Banner Saga. Thank you for joining us this episode. Join us next week as we discuss Final Fantasy VIII. Originally released on February 11th, 1999. Yes, it is celebrating its 20th anniversary. If you feel really old like me right now, well... <laughs> You you've come you're listening to the right podcast that's for sure All right so moving on to our news of the week Uh Lindsay what news took out with you this week Okay, so, um, everybody, like, all anime fans, gamers, got together (laughs) a few months ago when Jump Force was first announced at E3, just going insane over this new game based off of characters from the most popular animes of today fighting each other in like they're fighting each other in like New York. <laughs> uh-huh. Um so recently uh it was what magazine was this again? It was the Famitsu? Japanese magazine. Famitsu? Um, I think it was uh yeah. One of those. Yeah, I'm not finding the title here. They don't even have the title on the magazine. It's got to be one of those two. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. They don't have the title of it. Um, yeah, they announced that two characters from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure are entering the battle. Uh, Jotaro, <laughs> Jotaro, Kujo, and Dio. Yeah. And- <laughs> Uh, I, I know this is, I still haven't watched the anime. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm not a big fan of the anime. I'm going to be 100% honest. There are going to be people online that are going to, like, you know, <laughs> send me hate messages, but I'm not a big fan. It's a little too silly for me. Um, but I know that this news is going to, like, me- make a lot of people just really wild because, um, I mean, it's a Shonen Jump character that, you know, it should have been announced from the get-go. If they announced it from the get-go alongside, like, Goku and whomever, like, you know, that would have been fine because JoJo is just blowing up in popularity, especially in, like, the past two or three years. Like, it's been crazy. Um, so, yeah, that's that's something that I'm excited for, even though I'm not as big of a JoJo fan as I should be or uh, as, as I could be. Um, yeah. Really happy. I, I'm really excited for that game overall. Has a lot of franchises and and Shonen Jump, um, you know, anime protagonists that I really love. Like, um, uh, like uh, what's his name? Gone Freaks from um, Hunter Hunter. Like Kill You All from Hunter Hunter. Uh, like uh, Izuku Midoriya from uh, My Hero Academia. Uh, Yu Yu Hakusho is in it. Oh man, it's just all these like really cool, cool anime protagonists, you know. And um, you could go on Game Revolution. I've written so much about this game. I'm really hyped for it, dude. Uh, I've written a couple articles already. Um, you know what you should be excited for. What who else you should expect. It's all there, dude. So definitely go check that out if you got a chance and if you're into Jump Force. Uh, really excited for that game. I think it comes out February. 15th right oh wow that's really soon i yeah, didn't realize weeks. yeah yeah like and personally i am i i still gotta watch a bunch of anime like for example i have to watch my hero <laughs> but mm. uh personally i am a huge fan of light agony and the death note anime not the movie let's not talk about them <laughs> <laughs> but the yeah. anime series i love it <laughs> mm. oh yeah i love that show too i mean um oh i think tim tim are you here hello tim is Sorry. here <laughs> Woo! Oh Woo! tim 
Tim, do you have a news story for us? Uh, yes. Just let me check my brain for a second. Okay. And not but anyway, the anyway, um, I'm really, you know, getting on, on the Death Note, uh, uh, talking about Death Note, I think that, like, I think that that character inclusion was really smart because I think it's supposed to play into the narrative in some kind of way. Mm -hmm. So, like, I think that's, that's a, that was a smart inclusion, even though he's not going to be a playable fighter. Um, speaking of... And it, it's really odd to me because like Light Yamagami can't isn't a playable fighter yet. Yugi Moto, not Yugi Moto, um, the Pharaoh is a player playable fighter. So it's like, what? see, I thought that Light was also playable. No, he's not. You know, and, and it's kind of it's a little disappointing because it's like, man, uh, I wanted to wreck shit. You know, from as um, yeah. Shinigami. Um, but damn, that would be so. Like I, I could. I mean, I can understand why he wouldn't be playable, but at the same time, I could think of several ways to make him playable. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, they have they have Yu-Gi-Oh in there. You know, he's, like, playing cards and shit, and he's a playable character. So, like, why couldn't they include Light? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you could choose... Like, hmm. You could... Light First, you would probably start out... Um, like, how I would do it is you would start out as playing, um, uh, Ryuk. You, yeah, you would, exactly. Like, you would start as playing Ryuk, and then once you, like, build up whatever, like, uh, I don't know what it'll be classified as in the game, like, your special or whatever it is, mm -hmm. uh, you would have, like, light would come out, and you would have an option of how to kill your enemy using his notebook <laughs> yeah or, or something because you know there are different rules in the notebook so like you you know um I, I don't know like they'll perform a task or something before they die or i don't know something 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 cool something imaginative i, I don't know yeah I, i'm not as well versed I've, this was like many years ago that i saw death note but like yeah something cool you know um a little disappointing but or they could have, you know, they could have made Light Yaga Yagami, they could have just given him a tennis racket. Because he's like an ace tennis player, right? <laughs> so they they could have just, true. like, had him, like, bouncing balls on people and, you know, like, shooting across the court. You know, you know, come on. Let's be imaginative. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Anyway, Tim, how are you? How have you been? Uh, Doing all right. Cool. I just got a... um. A new external hard drive for backing up purposes nice. based on things that happened to me recently. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, that's pretty wild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have uh, the PC I'm using now is like six and a half years old. I've never backed it up. So right. I should probably do that. Yeah. <laughs> now... Yeah. It's, so, yeah. It's a good decision. Good choice. Uh, do you have a news story for us? Uh, anything stick out to you this past week? Sure. Um, I kind of wanted to go with something different, but just for the sake of things. Um, uh, Fallout 76. Oh. There's a new thing with that. Another new thing. You might think, yes, another new thing. But we had a thing. <laughs> There's another new thing. <laughs> and the additional new thing that we have like weekly now at this point but um <laughs> yeah i guess there was a update that was put through but it actually rolled back like some so basically it was like instead of being a new updated patch it was an older one and that came with it some old bugs that people had dealt with before and now they're back yeah. In what's supposed to be like the recent like patch update. So Yeah, I know. It, it basically kind of, with that. It basically kinda of erased all of the initial patches from what I like gleaned from it. I, I just went over this really uh you know, cursory, but like it, it 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 like eliminated like maybe like the first like the very minor type of things that they fixed. And now they're back. 
and it's like like why like <laughs> how do they overlook this oh my god i don't know that's so oh i really god. don't know that game is so <laughs> jeez and then the they I, not to not to derail your news but like i also heard that i think it wasn't the past week but maybe two weeks ago um that they like people want it to be a free-to-play game right and like Bethesda was like, this is not going to be free to play. Yeah. So how long do you, let me ask you this. How long will it take for Fallout 76 to become free to play at this point in time? At this point. Uh, well, I don't know that it, that it will. I mean, do they seem think pretty. It never will? I don't know. I mean, I didn't read any of the articles that talked about their response to that idea, but. I mean, if they're not willing to do that, then it just might not happen. But right, given given the things that have happened, maybe it. I don't know. Maybe it should. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I saw a place pricing it for twenty bucks already. So <laughs> I saw places giving it out for free. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I think in I think there was a a um a promotion in games. I don't know. It was, I think they have. Is it GameStop? I don't know. In Germany, I don't know what what their what their video game store is. But in Germany, if you bought like an Xbox One controller or something, they gave you a copy of Fallout seventy six for free. Damn. Yeah. Dang. Because they couldn't even get rid of that damn thing, so they <laughs> <laughs> they just tied it to this <laughs> the controller sales. That's that's really bad, man. I don't I don't know. I'm kind of. <laughs> I don't really know what to think about the game. I'm all I know is I'm gonna stay far away from it. I'm never gonna touch it. That's it, you know. And I, I'm just gonna hope yeah. that That's Fallout Five is not gonna have any any resemblance to this thing whatsoever. So. Yeah, my my friends and I we were so hype about it when I went to Jersey in October. <laughs> And then when it released, like, a month later, it was just like, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, never mind. Yep, 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 yep. That, they really they really dropped the ball on that one. Uh, as for me, my new story of the week, very simple and clean, you could say. Uh, <laughs> Hikaru Yutada, uh, who is a Japanese artist that I love a lot, um, she released a song that went along with uh, alongside Kingdom Hearts 3. It's called Don't Think Twice and uh, it's it's okay. It's good, I guess. But that's not the that's not the reason why I'm bringing it up. It's because it actually hit the Billboard Top 100, which is awesome. Ooh. Yeah, which is awesome for a video game um soundtrack, a video game song because it's like wow, video games are really popular nowadays, huh? Uh yeah. I'm really. Yeah, so it would that imply that it's playing on the radio? <laughs> I don't know. It could maybe iHeartRadio or Pandora, or something like that, like Nerd <laughs> Tunes. I I don't know. I don't know the stations. <laughs> I don't know the stations that they have there. But like, yeah. I mean, it, I think it's ninety eight, so it's really you know it's barely made it. But still, very cool that um, Hikaru Itada made it into the charts finally. I think this is her debut. This is um, what's his face's uh, Skrillex's like eighth debut, I think I read. Um, I don't really like the song very much. It's kind of like I don't know. I feel like it butchers Utada's voice, and I'm like, why? Because you know Skrillex, like he's like the wub wub and whatever, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, okay, okay, you know, just get it out of your system, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> maybe i'm too old i don't know but like it's, it's not my thing um did you guys listen to that song at all don't think twice i had it actually i i do plan on it i don't know why i did that i was just mm -hmm. lazy like i said earlier yeah that's fine uh, for whatever reason <laughs> you're not missing out on much uh, tim are you interested in kingdom hearts 3 or kingdom hearts in general I've never played it, but it's one of those things where I feel like at some point I probably will. Oh boy, let me tell you, you gotta. 
I, I'd say like play like the main ones, man. Like don't even, don't even, you know. I never realized, um, and you know, people have been making videos about it, so I've been watching some of those, and some of them touch upon it's like Kingdom Hearts one, Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance, Kingdom Hearts two over three thirds squared or whatever. <laughs> like all these two hundred fifty eight divided by names. two. It, no, it's it's two hundred fifty eight yeah. well, over two. It's not even that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and then there's the my favorite is Kingdom Hearts two point eight. Yeah. Final chapter <laughs> prologue. A fragment. Roman toy. numeral two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A Roman Point numeral eight. two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's there's Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. Uh, I think what is the I don't know I don't even know. There's so there's so many strange ones, man. I I don't even know anymore. Um, but I just like watch a YouTube video and <laughs> just play like the main ones because those are like the core gameplay. Um, you know, one, two, yeah. and three. Because outside of that, Is, like, you're gonna go crazy. There's one that's called like the story so far. Does that encompass everything? Everything, like absolutely everything. Yeah, everything but three. Mm -hmm. So like all the games. Every game, yeah. I mean, technically not the mobile game because, like, the mobile game obviously it's really hard to port that. So they what they did with the mobile was they they made it into a movie. Um, it's like about an hour long, uh, and it's just all the cutscenes kind of put together. And that's it. Um, yeah, it was essentially just to like bring people up to speed on what's going on in Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. so people can play the third one. Gotcha. Yeah. I'll probably get that at some point then. I think they did it with Coded too. So like Coded was a mobile game, then it went to 3DS, and then from 3DS, they didn't they didn't really know what to do with it like when it transitioned into consoles. So like they were like, okay, let's just make it into a movie. Um so the same thing. Uh yeah, I mean it, it's kind of like now that I've seen everything that Kingdom Hearts 3 has, like it, you have to kind of see everything, even like the mobile game stuff, because you won't understand the ending. It's really complicated, dude. It's so complicated. Like, even just with <laughs> the freaking organization, like oh, in yeah. the beginning of the whole series, it's just like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, they're nobodies. I, I played a little bit of one because I've been on Tarzan for years. I haven't played it since like 2013. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I also own two and I played a bit of uh, 358 slash two days. Uh, my friend introduced me to a bit of uh, the one on the PSP. Um, Birth by Sleep, yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that's pretty much my. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to get more into it because I can go on and on about it. It's just it's a rabbit hole. You know what I mean? Like, it's just you're, you're going to get lost in it yeah. <laughs> without, a, without a handy video. So, oh, uh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's Kingdom Hearts for you. It's uh, overwhelming, dude. Like <laughs> it's super overwhelming, super, super overwhelming. I, I'd suggest, you know, having some kind of companion video or something. move on to what we're playing this upcoming week uh tim what are you playing this upcoming week i think um i still well i actually finished uh delta rune um Ooh. but i still have like <laughs> i i think there's just one like um optional boss left i'm trying to defeat and he's like have you guys played Undertale? No. I don't, yeah, I have. I, don't know about I, it. I beat it and everything. Okay. So this guy that I'm trying to fight, he's basically the sands of this. Oh god. Game, so. <laughs> so when I started fighting him, I was like, Oh, you're you're that guy. Great. I'll spend the next five hours trying to oh. beat this guy. But So it must be very difficult then. Oh, yeah. It's very difficult. 
but that's the fun part. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'll probably be doing lots of that. Mm. Uh, Lindsay, what are you playing this upcoming week? Uh, I'm still trying to finish Pokemon Quest. <laughs> I've been playing it, well, not not like nonstop or anything since release. I've taken, you know, a month or so breaks since it's released because it could, you know, you obviously, the, the game is a free to play game, so you have to like, you have the wait times before you can play again, or you can use ticket to cash in and play more earlier. So, um, there's a lot of grinding involved in the game. Mm -hmm. I am down to the last six Pokemon. Oh. And it just won't end. <laughs> so how does this, how does it work? Like, how does it work, like, the capturing the Pokemon? Okay, so, um, you have to keep putting in, uh, different ingredients to... Get Pokemon to uh, come to your like uh, cooking pots, and it's all by chance, of course, because Pokemon. Uh, which Pokemon will come to the pot? Um, you and the fill Pokemon? your Pokedex. You know, you you of course want all of them. So I'm trying to get uh, Chansey, which is only a 3.4 percent chance. <laughs> Wait, so you eat and the Pokemon? You eat them? No, you don't eat them. You're not you, hunting you... them? Why not? No, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're trying to get them to come to your camp so yeah, they so can, you can eat. eat them. No! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck these Barbarian. people. I mean, they're like... Also... Farfetched. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> they ate Farfetched? He died. Canonically, yeah. <laughs> when? Really? Holy yeah, it's shit. a duck, man. Oh. It's a duck that holds a leak in it. It's like a meal just ready to... Am I right? These Pokemon are so like... Come on, man. They're so edible. Like, you gotta eat them. <laughs> You're not eating Pokemon. <laughs> you, you gotta, though. What else are you gonna do? Eat animals? I know the animals oh exist in this God. world, right? <laughs> Like, actual animals exist. You don't have to eat anything! <laughs> but actual animals exist in this world, right? Am, um, I, am I wrong? Or no? So, like, why not? Not in Pokemon! Look, what, about, what, about, what about, like, Oddish and stuff? Like, the, like those, like the, like, the leaf Pokemon. You have, like... You're not eating you have, any Pokemon! You have salad, you have salad, and then you have, oh like, the, the meat right there. You know what I'm saying? It's like a no. really hearty meal. God, it makes me hungry. I want to eat an Oddish, an Oddish now. Oh, man. You're not eating. Blossom? Mmm. That must be tasty. Uh, I wonder how you cook them. If they no. do. Them. But anyway, so they're... What were they're, you saying? Yeah. Yeah, they were lures, right? <laughs> they're lures to, to attract the Pokemon, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. And not eat them. And then the gameplay is pretty much just where you have, you could have it on automatic where your Pokemon are attacking other Pokemon. <laughs> That's cruel. It, it, they, you give them stones to power them up. <laughs> what? You, you give and them then steroids? they, it's just like an automatic simulator pretty much where they, or you can uh assign different moves for them to use but yeah that's really up to you and they go throughout the world and attack pokemon listen all i'm saying is instead of doing all oh. this instead of giving them roids to kind of like you know giving these these poor pokemon steroids come on you the poor they cook on the poor things you know you just you just kill the pokemon all right you put it out of the misery and then you eat it it's you know it's simple. It's the, it's the way of life. I, yeah. I'm telling you, man. It, Don't the Pokemon look happy, though? Don't they look they cheerful? Look, they look happier in my stomach when they're, <laughs> when they're in my, my digestive tubes. Uh, oh, my God. I'm anyway. keeping all my Pokemon away from you. <laughs> okay, that's fine. That's fair. Um, 
what I'll be playing this week is um, I'm going to be playing... I, I've pretty much beaten Kingdom Hearts 3. I haven't gotten the secret ending yet. I'm going to go through the game and get all those Mickey, you know, fun shit um, scattered around all these worlds and shit. Um, it's, a, it's good. It's a good game. Um, I hate Frozen. And <laughs> there's a mission where you have to find Olaf's body because he, he's a fucking idiot and he lost his body. <laughs> thing. And like you have to find his body. Oh, I fucking hate him. Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm not looking forward to doing that. But, you know, I, I want to get the secret ending. I already kind of know what it's about, but, um. Yeah, that's what I'll be playing this upcoming week. And I might be playing Union Cross just like on the side because I'm a little curious about it. Um, it seems kind of fun. I like the new Heartless that they have in there, so we'll see. What is it about? I, I've never heard of it. Union Cross? It's like a prologue to like everything. To oh, okay. Lore. It's like a lore building entry. Yeah. So that about wraps it up for this episode of the Time Hop Podcast. I'm your host again, Dave Lozada. You can find me on Twitter at Xenocreator125. Lindsay Schubert's here. You can find her on Twitter at InfamRedYoshi. Tim Ronan's here. You can find him on Keen Gamer, writing articles very di diligently. Thank you again for joining us this week, everyone. See you next week as we play Final Fantasy VIII. Thank you, everyone. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.